Hello everyone, I'm back and I'm back with the second part of probability distribution function and in this part we will be discussing two problems related to discrete probability distribution function. So as always I'm going to ask the same thing. Do you have a piece of paper with you and a pen? If not, pause the video right now and get a sheet of paper and pen so let's start so the question is in front of you I want you to read the question very carefully let capital X be the discrete random variable you might be wondering what is this uh, DRV that's nothing but discrete random variable which we discussed in the first video okay so it's given that capital X follows a probability distribution function or a probability mass function which is given by okay so this is our table so look at this like I told you before these are the input values so input values are minus 1 1 3 5 7 and the output values are given in terms of P so let's move forward okay and this is the question so we have five parts as expected the first part is find the value of P and the second part find probability X greater than 3 then probability of X between minus 1 and 5 including 5 excluding minus 1 and probability of x greater than or equal to 1 and finally we have something new here cumulative distribution function or the distribution function so when we reach the last question I will explain what is a CDF so shall we start okay so take a look at this it's given that our capital X follows a PDF and in the last video we observed a lot of things in a PDF and the first observation was if you add all the probabilities then the sum will be equal to 1 do you remember that property and we concluded something like Sigma PI is equal to 1 and our second observation was each and every probability value should be positive so these things can never be negative it, it might be zero but it can never change into negative so let's start with the first part so there goes our PDF and this is what we are supposed to find and this is our observation number one and what does this imply if you add all the probabilities you're going to get one so we have a quadratic equation here I can see very clearly we're going to get a quadratic equation p square plus 0.2 p plus 0.6 p plus 0.5 plus 0.1 plus 0.4 equal to 1 so let's simplify I hope you guys have calculator so take your calculator and solve the quadratic equation if you don't want to use calculator you can use formula method factorization method in which you're comfortable with so let's move ahead so look at this now this is very important we got two values for P and I'm going to cut one of those values because I can never accept that value think about it okay so if you use the value minus 1 what will happen to our probability distribution table this will become negative and this also will become negative for sure and the probability values can never be negative so this value is impossible so what's the value of p yeah 
exactly that's point one so you can write like this since p i's can never be negative we choose p is equal to point one so let's move ahead and now we are going to substitute till now this is a mystery box we don't know the exact values but now we know that the value of p is 0.1 i'm going to substitute so what is 0.1 the whole square and what about 0.2 into 0.1 etc 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 so now we have the probability distribution table in numbers not in terms of some constant p but in actual values so let's go for the next question anyway you might have noticed i have written the last table i just dropped that table with p so i'm going for the table in which we have already substituted the values of p okay now take a look at this probability of x greater than 3 that means 3 is not included i want you to focus on the domain the domain is minus 1 1 3 5 and 7 so greater than 3 means we are going to focus on the values 5 and 7 and in the last video you might have noticed all these quantities are mutually exclusive that means if one happens the other will not happen anyway combining all those facts what we do is we write like this and we add them up and i hope you're good in basic probability okay so what is the value or what is the output at five i told you this is a function so what is the output at five and what about the output at seven so there it goes and we have the answer 0.41 okay i want you to notice something very interesting what is the sum of all the probability values what is the sum of all the probability values in the pdf table it's one okay so if you want to find this probability we have another option if you don't like this method we can even try 1 minus we can add all these values and you're going to get the same answer so let's move to the next question yeah it's very easy i'll just guide you through this question and you can complete it to yourself okay so are you ready with your pen and paper so let's start so tell me what are the values of x between minus 1 and 5 in the domain excluding minus 1 and including 5 okay the values are 1 3 and 5 so as before as before i'm going to add them up and i'm really sorry i'm not going to add it's your job so let's go for the next part ah this is interesting we need probability of x greater than or equal to 1 if we use the logic which we used earlier i'm going to add all the probabilities starting from 1 to 7 okay so i have a trick let's do it like this 1 minus because look at this we have the numbers minus 1, 1, 3, 5, 7. So greater than or equal to 1 means you have to use all the numbers till 7. But we already know that the sum of all the probability values will be equal to 1. That is why I am able to do 1 minus probability of x strictly less than 1. And strictly less than 1 means there is only one person who is qualified. That is minus 1. And now the same thing. Put the value. Get the answer. Now the last part. 
the cumulative distribution function or simply the distribution function okay as the word cumulative is here we are going to accumulate we are going to add all the probabilities so here is our probability distribution function now the cumulative table will look like this so take a look at this i am writing the same thing here but for the value 1 i am going to add them up and for the value 3 i am going to add them up and then and as expected the final answer will be 1 cdf which is denoted by capital f of x is actually probability of the random variable taking values less than or equal to x and that is exactly what's happening over here less than or equal to minus 1 then less than or equal to 1 then less than or equal to 3 i hope you're okay with this so let's do one more problem related to pdf probability distribution function or the probability density function or the probability mass function so please read the question so we have a discrete random variable with a pdf okay so we have two constants p and q we have two unknowns so i'm sure about the first question what's the first part can you can you guess what's the first part yeah find the values of p and q but remember to solve for two unknowns we need two equations i'll repeat in your high school you might have learned if you want to solve for two unknowns we need two equations so i'm sure you know how to construct the first equation if you add all the probability values you're going to get one and for the second equation they have given us the expectation okay so if you are not that good with the formula for expectation variance standard deviation etc pause the video right now and watch the previous video in which i gave you all the formulas related to probability distribution functions anyway let's start so as always i'm going to write since capital x follows a pdf okay so tell me what are the observations yeah if you add all the probability values you're going to get one and we write sigma pi equal to one and what does it mean yeah add them up equate it to one now you can use a calculator or you can simplify in any manner you like but i want you to get this equation and please call it equation number one i'll repeat once more in this particular question we have two unknowns and to solve for two unknowns we need two equations and the first equation is given by p plus q equal to 5 by 8 and we got it using the relation sum of all the probability values in a probability distribution function is 1 so we have the equation here okay now i am going to use the next fact it's given that expectation is equal to 2 and that means sigma pi xi sigma pi xi will be equal to 2 and what do you mean by saying pi xi okay that means probability values multiplied by the input values and then again you add so i'll explain it will be like 1 by 16 into 0 plus 4 by 16 into 1 plus p into 2 plus q into 3 plus 1 by 16 into 4 and the value is equal to 2 i hope you're good till here 
so as before i want you to simplify you can use a calculator or you can do it in your mind that's your choice but you should get the second equation that is 2p plus 3q is equal to 3 by 2 now we have two equations equation number one and equation number two so take a calculator so solve the equations so that you get the values for p and q okay so i got the values of p and q and as before i'm going to substitute i'll substitute it over here so that i have the probability distribution function that's it that's it now something very simple you have to find the variance and the standard deviation okay so the variance is given by sigma pi xi square minus mean the whole square i hope you remember the formula from the last video okay and you know how to work out with this sigma thing and it will be something like this and make it sure you don't forget this so it's going to be like 1 by 16 into 0 square plus 4 by 16 into 1 square plus etc 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 1 by 16 into 4 anyway I have the values over here and the calculations I hope you got 1 okay so what's the value of standard deviation yeah that's also one so that's it i'm going to stop the video here in the next video we will discuss about continuous probability distribution functions till then bye